As promised in my last video, I said I was going to do an update on the Hatchomatic 3000. Well, we've got our dozen eggs in there. They've been doing really well. I did want to give you a candling update on the eggs after the first week because you could see how the veins and everything were spreading around the shell. You could even see like the heartbeat of the little chick inside and everything going off. Unfortunately we're on Monday now so we've sort of missed that by a quite a while. Actually it was sort of within six days all of that had happened, maybe five. So I'm going to turn the lights off, I'm going to get the tripod out, I'm going to get an egg out and I'm going to show you uh, what you should be looking for in terms of developing eggs and eggs that haven't quite made it. But you'll be pleased to know out of the 12 eggs we've got in there only one of them hasn't uh, hasn't made the, the cut and isn't fertile so uh, that's a pretty good turnout I reckon so that's a thumbs up for the guys who we bought the eggs from so the lights just come on I'll just take the camera over and give you a quick rundown as to what we've got in there while the lights on you'll be able to see everything how it's churning away how, your, how yours should look and then we'll we'll get the tripod out and we'll We'll do some candling. So here we go. She's come on obviously because she's at 37 degrees now. She gets up to 30, 38, turns off. You can see there's some condensation within the tank itself. And also if you look through, we're looking for a target of really we want to be 40 to 50 percent humidity. We're a little bit high, we're 65, that's good for hatching. I could always just open the top and let a bit out. In fact, doing just that now will probably aid in reducing the humidity of the container. So if I pop her open, you can see we've got our light, aka heat source, over in the corner. The sponge doing its job. I've only had to fill that up once, and I could tell because the humidity dropped right down to 40 something. And then we've got all the eggs in here, so let me introduce you to uh, some of the little fellas we've got. Of course we've got Harry in the background over there. Who's this? We've got Dave. We've got Bob. Who's this fella here? Oh! That's Larry. Hey, Lamo Deuce Deuce. <laughs> we've got Lula. We've got Betsy. We've got Elsie. Or have we? Hey, there's a clue. Mo, Stevie. That egg's not called Mott, by the way. No, no. That one's Daisy. Then we've got Ariel and then Kitty. So we've got the kids to name the eggs. I name the eggs and Gemma name the eggs. We all name three each. So let's get the tripod out, guys, and uh, do a little bit of candling. Okay then guys, I've had to put us in the little closet here where it's relatively dark and I can shut the door when we go for it. So this egg we've got at the minute is, uh, or was, going to be Elsie. So if I just shut the door and uh, flick the light on, you'll see straight through the egg just like that. So what we're looking at here is we can see the yolk and the albumen, the white of the egg. Now if this egg had have been fertile within a few days you would have begun to see filaments of veins and arteries running down the edge on the inside of the shell and there would have been a solid dark spot that you would have recognized. This is if you need to candle the eggs very early on, sort of the first three or four days and that solid dark spot is where the hearts begin to develop, develop and that begins to beat within the first six days or first maybe three days I'm not exactly sure but very very early in, 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 in its development so you can see from this egg that we just have an equal separation of yolk if I'm moving it round the yolk's moving freely it won't float to the pointy end but you can see there doesn't seem to be much life in there. So let's go and get an egg that was fertile. 
Okay boys and girls we're back and who else have we brought but of course Dave. Everybody's got a mate called Dave so I thought it's only fitting that we bring Dave in here. Now you've got to remember we set these eggs last Sunday and today is now Monday evening so they are eight days old. I believe that's right. I may have missed a week. No, I have. They're 14 days old. I beg your pardon. 14, 15 days old. They're due a hatch next week. And of course you can already see how defined the bottom of the egg is in comparison to the top of the egg. Now, if I turn it all the way around, you can see there that's the air space in the top of the shell. And it looks a little bit like there's a crack there. Trust me, there isn't. But that there is the air gap. Now, top of every egg, you get an air gap, and you want to be pointing that air gap upwards when you actually set the eggs. But if we spin spin Dave round, and we have a look in the uh, the albumen and where the yolk would have been, you might be lucky enough to see some movement in there because that. There we go, look. Look at him moving. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a cheeky poo. He's inside there, and you can really see how defined it is. That border between the light and dark. He's just trying to get it light. Oh, there we go. We're going to see him moving about. Come on, Dave. You're normally dancing all over the place, my friend. He might be asleep. Although I don't know how with this light blasting through there. But yeah, very often you get the eggs in there. And you'll be able to see them moving around. Particularly when you put the light on. Because they don't really like... The bright light's coming through the shell. Oh, there we go, look. See him have a little kick? There we are, look at that. Can you see that? He's kicking away. Oh, he's having a good old thump about in there. Look at that. So that's how you tell, ladies and gentlemen, that you've got some baby little chick chicks inside your eggs. Hey, isn't that freaking awesome? So there we go folks, that's a quick update on the eggs in the Hatchomatic 3000 no less. Um, fingers crossed, looks like we're going to get 11 out of the 12. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we get quite a lot of hens as well so we can get some lovely bantam eggs for breakfast. Mm -mm -mm. Damn, you can't beat your own grown chicken eggs. And of course, another benefit from having your own chicks is the all the kind of crap the kitchen waste that you've got in the house straight in the chicken pen you know everything from banana skins apple cores and uh, if you've got a big enough garden ours is pretty small but you can just let them out and they're going to eat all the pests off your plants but be careful because they are renowned for devouring some of your vegetable garden they certainly will if they're allowed to so we're going to wrap it up guys, thanks for tuning in, I will keep you updated on the progress of our chicks in the Hatchimatic 3000. If you're not already a subscriber I suggest you click the subscribe button down below, that means you will not miss out on the next update. You can leave a comment, I love to listen to and read all of your comments. Thumb up the video if you enjoyed it and if you want to follow along with uh, some other like minded folks or even follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram then read the links in the description and you can follow me there. So thanks for watching guys, that's just a egg candling update in sunny Redford, freaking right it is.